Hey, it's John McBride, Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems, RMUS. What we're doing is discussing today a little bit about the FLIR Duo Pro R. Um, some configurations, some setups, um, operation, things that you can put it on the ship, and obviously different, different ways that we can actually operate this, which is a little bit different than the uh, currently product out there called the X-T2. Even though these two are identical as far as the way that they work, the way they operate, um, you know, as far as getting the images go, the actual integration operation is slightly different. But we're going to talk about the FLIR Duo. We have it set up currently on an M600. We are using a Yangda gimbal, um, very clean gimbal, it's very small. Uh, and then you have an, uh, other choices with the Gramsci gimbal if you ever wanted to use that. A little bit larger, if we can see. Um, so we've already got a lot of uh, inquiry on on which gimbal to choose and, and a lot of that just has to do with configuration on, on the ability of the gimbal itself. So um, with, the, with the Yangda, we have an actual HDMI out up on the top that we're pushing through to the M600. And when we configure it that way, um, we're capable of, of visualizing exactly what's coming through. It's coming in an HD stream because it is HDMI and then we're more than then we can go ahead and reconfigure the 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 bird to actually operate the gimbal additionally operate the camera so again slight differences um, between different models so we've got uh, between the flare duo pro r we have 13 millimeters 19 millimeters and 640 we have 336 and grand total of seven different models that they make and when we configure these on any ship it doesn't there isn't any specific way that it can be done, that it has to be done, but in order to take, take full advantage of, of the actual operation, there are some things that we, we need to consider when setting this up. So nothing majorly difficult here. I've just got it set up on, a, on a, an expansion module for the gimbal itself to operate it, and then a couple of switches that are programmed, and we'll, we'll go through a little bit of that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the operation of FLIR Duo Pro R. Some of the things that we can set up and how to configure the actual camera when we're talking about uh, doing PWM inputs, and that's uh, pulse width modulation, the typical RC uh, signal lines that can tell the camera what to do. There's a couple other things that are pretty neat. We have an HDMI out of the, out of the camera. We have an AV uh, signal out as well. And then as long as you can provide power to the camera, that's, we, can, we can set them up in a different, many different ways. So as we get into the app itself, you can download the app on both iOS and Android. It's called FLIR UAS app. This then Bluetooths to the camera so that when we are connected to the camera, we can configure a few things. One thing to remember is that this app has nothing to do with actual video transmission, only initial configuration, how we're gonna set it up the very first time and or maybe change settings later on if we need to. But this is just a configuration app. It doesn't, again, have anything to do with video pushing through. Now, some of the familiarity things that we can do here as we're taking a look at the stuff is that as we click different types of ways that we wanna be able to, to make the camera do, things visibly and we can change you know we take a little bit of close look at the app we can actually make, make this happen right now without any inputs to the actual system so we can change the IR the visible the picture in picture and those are just to see and make sure that they're set up the way we want them we have the ability to then program in the configuration list um, how we want to capture how we want to set up video recording, what type of video types it is. And then on the controller setting here, this is where we have a certain protocol. We have a choice between PWM or Mavlink. And we choose PWM here because we're using the traditional RC signals that are coming out of the DJ, DJI uh, system. So from PWM1 to PWM2 and PWM3, I can choose certain things for those uh, s switches or dials or stuff to do in order to change configurations on the camera and then we can decide uh, how many states or how many switch positions that we can utilize from them depending on on the, the function that we want to give it. When we come to the camera there's a couple of other things the Bluetooth power uh, Bluetooth power, we usually bring that down somewhere to a very low 10%. This is the transmitting power of the actual um, Bluetooth module inside the camera and just while it's powered on so it doesn't mess with anything else as far as control or anything that that we actually can turn down the power 
we need to turn that back up if we're doing configuration from far away as far as connecting the app to the actual camera. Um, we can see serial number, model number, all of that stuff, firmware version, if we need to update or not. We can see all of that stuff here in the, in the settings. So down here on the capture mode, again, we have the ability to control the camera if we're connected via Bluetooth, but we have the ability also to um, do this remotely. And we have to decide if we're doing a PWM capture, if we're gonna choose camera, Interval seconds for possible every second, every five seconds, however, in, however many seconds we need to set this up for, we can choose what we want to do there, and, and or video. Unfortunately, with this setup, we cannot do video and picture at the same time. You have to decide whether or not you're doing video or you're doing radiometric JPEGs or JPEGs if not. So you have to decide whether or not you're going to be, uh, before you take off, to configure it this way. And then from there, we have the ability to turn on MSX if we need it. Uh, and if we do turn it on, sorry, if we turn that on, we can show the strength of that popping through on the, on the actual visual portion of it. And that works. And MSX can stay on the whole time the way that we actually have this configured and set up. So this is just a, there's a lot of other things that you can do as far as deciding which color palettes you want to use, um, which kind of setup, you know, just, just the initial setups on, on, the, uh, on this. And there are tons of color palettes, as we can see, tons of color palettes that you can choose on this camera if you want to. So these are all full radiometric. You do have to decide what kind of a uh, file that you want to do um, as far as running the different types, setting up your emissivity, setting up reflective temperatures. All of those things can be done right here in the app. Okay, we just got done taking a look at the application called FLIR UAS in order to configure the Duo Pro R. And in doing so, we've set this up on an M600. The M600, has a couple of cool things about it. It's got an HDMI pushing feed, so we can push that through, and then we can configure it to actually have PWM outputs, which control both the gimbal as well as the camera. So both of those things are gonna work really well. Um, as we can see right here on my image of, of looking right here on the screen, we can see my face, and it's, it's actually fairly blurry. And so by controlling some of the, the um, inputs from the camera, we can move the camera up and down and that is doing, being done with the expansion module here. And then you can hear the audible beep that tells you when you're in the center to stop the motion. So up and down, we have a left and right. So we're gonna go swinging over here to my camera guy, Jace. And we see the camera show up and Jace show up in the shot. And we can see what happens is like it's cleared up a little bit because we do have a minimal focal distance between the FLIR camera, as well as the uh, lens that's, that's currently on there. All of that minimal focal distance also is, is determined by the actual um, lens and resolution on each of the di different configurations. So one of the things that we did set up again on the expansion module is we have the gimbal set up. We have a mode switch for the gimbal so it can act a, a certain way, um, straight down, lock forward and whatnot. So that's done on one of the switches. We have the ability now talking about camera functions that we have set up on the app. I can stop, start and stop recording. So I can create the start and stop and we got a confirmation that it did it as well as a red light turned on. So we're on video right now if we can see that. And if we stop the recording, light goes green, it tells you that it recorded and it both recorded in the RGB camera as well as the, the thermal camera on the SD cards. So, um, the other thing that we can do is uh, change the color palette and the, the viewable screen. So if we change the viewable screen here, we can see Jason Thermal right there. We can then scroll and see a picture in picture here. So I've got an RGB camera um, up on the front displayed and thermal. These in the configuration, you cannot swap. These are, this is the way it's going to be presented on the, on the output of HDMI. And then if we go over to a full RGB here, we can see a full RGB shot. So in thermal, um, we can also change color palettes here. 
and that allows us to basically see, so we have a hard time kind of seeing the camera right here, and we are in white hot. That's the color palette we're in right now. If we switch over to the black hot, we can see the camera pretty good. We switch over to iron bow, we can see the camera a lot better. So there's different color palettes that, that people's eyes respond to as well as changing those color palettes kind of change the way the, the back end looks. And when we have something really hot in the scene like Jace, we're gonna ask Jace to move out of the scene real quick and see if anything, what will actually change in the shot when he does and how it changes a little bit, just a little bit. We can see that this has highlighted a little. We'll move that out of the shot. So see how we've got some changes here. This is just the way the thermal camera operates. So if we change a couple of color palettes and let's put Jace back in the scene again. And we can see the how, how the, the camera will display these color palettes a little bit better depending on which ones you set. There's a number of, number of color palettes that the FLIR Duo Pro does, um, but this we, we can only configure the PWM to actually do three, so we do have it right here on a, on a three position switch to do that. So some of the configurations and how we set it up, um, we can also try to, to um, put GPS on, on the images themselves so we have the ability the Duo also has a GPS input here on the side. It's provided with the actual camera, so it runs up to the top and we can see the uh, GPS tagging that has been done. So let's go take it outside and see how it operates out there uh, as we fly it around and we'll go through a couple of more configuration settings. Okay, during this configuration, we went ahead and set this up on the M600. We've got it up in the air right now. We'll just show a couple of things, um, you know, as far as what the app sees and, and the things I can do to the camera and the gimbal on this configuration. So, as we move around, we can move the gimbal, the gimbal up and down. That's an easy one to do. That is on one of the dials. And then we can move the gimbal left and right. It's also on one of the dials. So, the audible noise, we can hear the beeping. The audible beeping noise allows us to, tells us that the gimbal is in its uh, dead center spot. Some of the other things that we've configured on the PWM outputs is just to change the picture in picture, the thermal, and we have just RGB. So we have that configured on this setup. We can also change the color palette. So we'll come back here to thermal and then on one of the switch we've configured, we can change the color palettes and how that looks. You get to choose three as far as three color palettes on here, um, just because you're only using a three position switch to choose, even though there's a various amount of different color palettes you can use. We're only selected black hot, white hot, and the fusion color palette. And then Lastly is that we actually have a mode switch that's set up on here for how the gimbal behaves or what it does. With a couple of switches, we can actually get the gimbal to recenter. We can get it to lock up or down. And that's just the way the mode switch works on, on this system. But we can still move the gimbal around wherever we need to, up and down, left and right. And as a second operator, it's actually a lot easier to do it this way than it is to try to set it up with the the expansion module on the main pilot so just a couple of things that we can show you on how this is configured in a flight operation and how what it looks like as as far as what we've done with this m600 configuration okay so we just finished up with our flight let's take a look at the uh some of the, some of the other things in comparison to um an xt2 versus the FLIR duo um some of the again just summarizing basically what uh, we've, what we've done here and uh, not necessarily saying that this is a bad setup or a good setup against the X-T2 but there is some things that pretty important to understand when you're setting it up a FLIR Duo Pro R this way rather than setting it up like an X-T2 is. So between the two of them um, we got to remember that we have to use some kind of a PWM input portion of that. We have to supply the ability to control a gimbal, to control the camera, to do a lot of different things that is a, an outside piece versus, and let's take a look at the X-T2 here, same setup, same image on the front end as far as the RGB. This is identical uh, 19 millimeter 640, so there's no difference there. And if we, you know, we do have an actual, the, the newer style um, connection that we'll work with M200, M210, uh, M210 RTK, and the M600. So we'll do some switching out and actually put this on there. 
uh, and, and do a comparison video here shortly uh, to show you the difference between an X-T2 and running the FLIR Duo. One of the other things is that the SD cards are actually right here on the side um, and on this gimbal uh, design, you actually have to take this cover off to get access to those SD cards, whereas the SD cards on an X-T2 are up here on the top. This allows for the IP rating that this, this camera can do. So that's another um, kind of comparison as far as that goes. And then you've got full integration uh, into the app, all of the selections that you can do. And again, pay, pay attention to the next video that we're putting out to discuss how the X-T2 works. Other than that, I really do actually like this camera. We can put this on anything. We don't, there isn't anything, you're, you're very limited on the other side to actually use an X-T2, you're limited to only using them for the platforms, whereas we can take a Duo and actually put that on any kind of rig. We can set it up even on a moving vehicle or a car. Uh, there's just so many different configurations you can do here, but that's kind of the advantage of, of the uh, FLIR Duo itself is being able to do that. So in an inspection standpoint, there is no difference between the images. There is no difference between the RGB in images between the two, but they are identical and exactly the same. You can configure um, both radiometric uh, um, external parameters if needed uh, to do that. So no, no issues with the images in that respect. Just operation is really what has changed. So follow again on this next video that we're going to do. We'll talk about, we'll set up the M600 and we'll talk about the X-T2.